All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be doing some more maintenance. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be doing more wheel bearings, more front wheel bearings. I did these before, just DIY on my channel. Um, and today's lesson is don't buy Chinese wheel bearings. So these wheel bearings are centric wheel bearings made in China. If you're not aware, Centric makes two different types, at least two different types of wheel bearings. Um, they're, I don't know what their China made one is called, I forgot, I think it's C-Tech. Um, and they're made in China and their premium line, uh, which is right here, are made in Japan. And you can see here that there's a little bit of pool of oil right there. Uh, there was a lot of oil and I think that's just the grease inside the bearings uh, liquefying. Um, there was a lot of oil built up on my hub. So this is where the wheel bearing goes. It's pretty oily down there. The first time I took my car apart a few days ago and cleaned this up and there's a bunch of oil just pooled right here. Uh, this is the heat shield that or dust shield, I should say, that was on the leaky side. And you can see all this area. That's oil from the wheel bearing. So it was leaking quite a bit. And this wheel bearing uh, doesn't feel super smooth. When I turn it, it feels a little crunchy, uh, which is a sign of a wheel bearing going out, which is won't, not a surprise if the grease is failing inside the bearings. So I am going to go ahead and replace these with Japanese made centric wheel bearings. Um, the crappy part is I actually had those wheel bearings before I even bought these Chinese ones. I just had forgotten that I had purchased them right when I had purchased the car. So we're gonna do it right. And we're gonna go ahead and do some extended studs for the front, just to re prepare for any kind of wheel choices in the, in the beginning. Um, so it kind of works out. I get to do some extended studs and uh, replace these wheel bearings. So that's it. I already showed you how to do this in my previous video. I'll link it in the description. All right, guys, so it's that easy to take off your wheel bearings. And separate them. So I took them off in about I took them off the vehicle and separated them and got into this stage in about one and a half hours, which is pretty good. Oh, this is my second time doing it, so I know a lot better what to do now. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these studs. You can go ahead, you know, while they're on the car, you can just hammer these out if you want. Just use a use a mallet. Uh, I'm gonna use this because I have this already, so this works out pretty good. This is a ball joint press tool and it works really great. Um, I just want to use do it because use this tool because you get you have a lot more control. It takes a little bit to set up, but super easy. You just have this set up, put your impact on the end. And it's as easy as that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the rest of them and then install the new um, extended studs. All right, to install the extended studs, I'm gonna go ahead and use the, the try and use the ball joint service tool again. I, I do have this tool specifically made for studs as you saw me use in my video, uh, my last video where I showed you how to do this extended studs. But what I didn't like about this tool is that it kind of, you put your lug nut on this end and this side sits on the hub basically like this. And when you basically impact the lug nut and push the stud in or pull the stud into position, uh, it kind of seems like it eats into the threads of the, of the stud a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this press tool like this. And basically the opposite of how I use it to take out the studs. And I'm gonna see if it works and uh, hopefully, it'll, hopefully it'll work out a lot smoother. All right, it looks like it worked out pretty good. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of them. All right, so there you go. It ended up working out really great using this. Um, so like I said before, when I was trying to explain to you how this tool and like this tool, so the way this tool works is you put this on there and you put a lug nut on and then you use a lug nut to pull the stud into the hub. And what I found is that um, when I had the lug nut on here, I would see that it kind of chewed up the threads like a little bit. Um, it's not really a big issue at this far in because your your lug nuts are probably not going to reach that far in anyway. Um, this is probably the area where your wheel would, the wheel hub would be. Um, so even if the threads were completely mangled, but I mean, who wants mangled threads or even slightly chewed up threads on brand new studs that you just purchased? So here you can see I didn't mangle the studs at all with this method. All, you, all it does is kind of um, shine up the back of these studs a little bit, but um, worked out really good. Uh, so I'll pick up with you guys uh, when I get to the shop and uh, put you guys on time lapse again when I press in the new wheel bearings. All right, and that is that. So the wheel bearings are in, just a quick press in. Takes about 10 minutes to do both of them total. So we're all good. Big thanks to Formula S, Alan and Chris. Thanks again. Always letting me come by and hang out and do my thing here. If you haven't heard of them, they're big S2000 guys, but they can get you NSX stuff too. NSX parts and everything. So. Thanks again. All right guys, so we're back. Um, we got the wheel bearings installed on the new, on the hubs and um, everything's feeling, feeling really smooth. So now we just gotta throw these guys back on and then put the axle nuts on. The axle nuts, um, I said last time that, you know, when I used them for a second time, they should replace. You need to replace these, and yeah, they're kind of torn up right now. You should replace them. I forgot to order new ones, so guess what? I'm gonna use them again. It's not gonna come off. These are torqued at 242 foot pounds, so uh, we should be fine. But um, once we get these on, I'm gonna gun them on. I'm probably not gonna be able to torque it till you get them on the car, just like last time my DIY video. You're probably gonna have to fully install everything so you can get your brake calipers on and be able to have someone hold the brakes while you torque the torque these to spec. Um, but let me throw these on real quick. Once again, 36 mil socket. Here's a quick look at the carbon six ball joints. And so I took these off earlier in the week because I was replacing the poly boots with OEM rubber. Um, and so I don't know how that's gonna work out. I'm just kind of filming this. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna put this in the video, but you can see here that, um, so the way this, this boot, this ball joint sits kind of like, like this. The way this is creasing right here on this section, it's kind of a little bit worrisome. It's hard to see in the video again, but it's only been on for like three days and one drive and it's already kind of put a nice little crease in the rubber. So hopefully that holds up and doesn't end up making a point for failure. Cause that was my whole point of replacing the boots with OEM rubbers. I thought they would be more durable cause in my uh, experience, poly boots, ball joint boots don't hold up that well. These seem to be holding up pretty decently though, except for the Instead of there being like a sir clip on holding these boots on, there's like a rubber O-ring. So the rubber O-rings look like they're showing some some age. There's like micro cracks in them. Here, I'll try to show you guys better look at the O-ring. You can see there's a bunch of micro cracks on the O-ring right there. So I'm concerned about that. If that busts, you know, the bottom of the boot, 
uh, basically would be loose and let go of a lot of grease and get a lot of contaminants in it. Um, I'm just hoping that I'm not going to kick myself for replacing it with OEM boots. You can see you can see that crease right there already. That's just from basically the car sitting. And the ball again, the ball joint wants to flex this way at rest. And hopefully this OEM boot lasts. All right, so these Sir clips that I was waiting for came in um, for these larger boots. So I'll check for play each time. Got brand new OEM boots. And I'm going to line them with a little bit of Liquor Molly Long Life Grease. Just a little bit on the inside, like that. Make sure it's seated. And I don't have the proper tool to put these sir clips on. So what I do is I grab this Shinetsu grease, which is made for like rubber. It's generally made for rubber seals and stuff to keep it, keep them plush. And I'm gonna use it as like a lubricant to get this on. And you just got to be very careful. It's because these ends of these sir clips are very sharp and I've pierced one of these before on my old cars. And I do kind of stretch it out a little bit. Again, this is not the book by the book way by any means, but... This grease is okay to leave on rubber seals because rubber because that's what it's made for, except that I don't want these to just be a magnet for dirt and debris, especially since these ball joints tend to really crease crease these boots. And I don't want a bunch of rocks getting stuck in between the creases. Alright guys, I got the um, extended studs in and with the wheel bearing in. So we're good to go on this, and then I'll catch up back with you guys once everything is back together and the car is on the ground. All right, we're all done. Here's the extended studs, along with new wheel bearings for both sides. Hopefully that's the last time I have to change front wheel bearings for this car. Uh, thanks for watching.